What's going on guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back and I do appreciate the support. Guys, listen, I've been covering this uh, Madeline Soto case, right? That happened out there in uh, Kissimmee, Florida. And uh, I've been getting a lot of feedback in the comments and I definitely appreciate that. This video right here, I'm going to need y'all to comment on this and tell me if you feel what I'm, I'm about to say. I've been doing some research and I've been thinking about this all day because you guys have had some very interesting comments and it makes us think. That's why when you find videos where, you know, they pique your interest and you have something to say, say it, whether it's positive or negative, because it also gets the content creator like myself thinking and makes me go back and look at things over and over again. You guys make the channel better. But I want to jump into this because I seen something and I think I figured something out. Now, I'm no detective or anything like that. I'm good at reading people and actions. And I found something that some of y'all seen, but I never saw this. And this right here opened the whole this right here blew the case wide open for me. Uh, now, the situation we all know, Madeline Soto uh, lost her life at the hands of Stephen Stearns, her mom's boyfriend. A lot of people are making a big uh, deal out of how the mother acted and they are saying she has in on it and she she knew something, so on and so forth. The way I run this is this. If I see it in the media or a credited media source, I'll say something about it. I can't go by somebody saying, well, they say and I don't know who they is. I can't do that. Um, but I got something today, y'all that I want y'all to see. And uh, a lot of people agree with me with what I said, where I think she wasn't a, a victim of, you know, she's not a, a involved in, in, in the uh, crime of the, you know, the death of a daughter. But I'm not saying she's out of the woods neither, but what I've seen. I think she knew something. I do. You know, a lot of times when you smell smoke, it's going to be fire somewhere. What I'm going to do right now, real quick, because I don't want to give up too much. And you have to watch this whole video. A lot of y'all don't watch this videos and y'all make crazy comments. Watch the videos that I do. Just watch the whole thing, because at the end, I'm going to drop a bomb on you. Now, check it out. I'm going to play for you because some of y'all didn't see it. You're just seeing snippets of it. The whole 10 minute interview when they had uh, Jennifer Soto, Madeline Soto's mom, and they were interviewing the, the thing everybody's talking about where they don't believe her and stuff like that. I want you to look at this video and I'm going to break something down after. Now, this video is 10 minutes long. Please just watch the video, guys, because what I did, what, what I'm going to say, if you didn't watch the whole video, you're not going to catch some of this stuff. So watch the whole video and we'll come back. Check it out. Okay. So the first question is if I can have your first, your last name and spell them both out for me. Okay. Jennifer Soto. J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-S-O-T-O. -E Mother. Mother. Jennifer, tell me how you feel right now. I feel like I can't breathe. All I keep thinking about is where is she? Is she safe? Is she okay? But we're, we're all a wreck. My entire family is a mess. We're just so worried. When did you first realize, or when did you file a missing report? We filed a missing report. Uh, we called the police at like 4:45 uh, yesterday, 4:45 uh, p.m. But she actually went missing early that morning, around between 8:45 and 9 o'clock in the morning. She went missing. Um, we had dropped her off close to the school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way.
we dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Um, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to share. You share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. I know you had conversations with detectives. Um, not sure what that conversation is, <clears throat> but whichever you feel comfortable sharing that we put the awareness out there. Yeah, she was uh, spotted walking uh, by the church, by the middle school uh, on the cameras. They saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave. They didn't see a vehicle or anything else. They just saw her walk away uh, around 9 a.m. heading towards the school, but she never made it. Um, yeah. What has the school said? Have you given in contact with the school? Yes, um, that they're doing everything they can. They've given me all their resources. The principals called me. They've looked at their cameras. Cameras, um, I don't think they've caught anything. The cameras is too far away from the sidewalk. Everything is too grainy, so they can't see specific faces. Um, but they've looked. Um, I'm just waiting to hear anything else from them. Is this normal behavior? Not at all. To just not show up or call or text or anything? Not at all, no. Um, she, from time to time, she will leave her cell phone at home accidentally, and that's actually what happened yesterday. She left her phone at home. She went to school. Um, but that happens from time to time. She's got ADHD. Uh, her memory, <laughs> she's very forgetful. Um, so, yeah, there's no way to track her right now because I have, well, the detectives now have her phone. Uh, but this isn't normal behavior, no. What was the last thing, I guess, that the conversation that you two had, you and your daughter? Um, we spoke about her birthday party. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great time. Uh, I couldn't make it because I was working. But she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I, I told her good night, and um, yeah, that was it. I, I, I wasn't the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, but yeah. Thirteen. She's thirteen years old. Yes. Thirteen, Madeline. 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 Um, what are you thinking right now? In my heart, I feel like somebody took her. This isn't like her to just pick up and run away um, or just not go to school. Um, you know, I don't know what to think. Friends, the friend's parents, you've contacted and Everyone. went through every single person? Everyone that we know that she knows. We've contacted them all, reached out to them. The parents have gone out to search and look for her as well. And we haven't come up with anything yet. I've seen a lot of posts on uh, Facebook, um, Hunter's Creek, rants and raves and what have you. Did people um, say that they were going to conduct some type of like search party or anything? Uh, a lot of people have asked me to volunteer. Like if there is one, if, the, if they can do one, um, there, I have people passing out flyers, going to every store in that vicinity, a gas station, church. Um, I think people, people were being stopped in the street this morning in front of the school to see if they've seen anything, if they've heard anything. My family is, they're going all out right now. Um, yeah. I and as a mother, you have a lot is going on in your brain um, so much to bring her back home what have, what have the, the law enforcement told you that you are able to share I mean that they're doing the best they can uh, they've had detectives come out interview us they took a piece of her clothing for the canine dog to see if they can sniff her out. I'm not sure when that's being done. 
um do you have any inkling where she possibly could be like if you would say okay last time um i went to work and came back she was at james house or, or, or sabrina's house and maybe i forgot to check that house or she played at this park one week and maybe she went back there or something like that we've looked everywhere we could have thought and anywhere she would have been um she would have known to wait for me at the school um but we did check where if she could have walked um, my mom's office is close to the school we checked there we checked the walking paths that she could have taken We've checked all of her friend's house. I, I think we've checked everywhere I could think of, honestly. What do you think, um... Oh gosh, I just had it tip of my tongue. What was she wearing? She was last seen wearing a green hoodie, black shorts, white Crocs, a black Jansport backpack with gray hibiscus flowers on it. And you said, this is not like her. Not at all. To run away, an argument, anything like that to provoke her? She's never done anything like this, no. And we haven't had any arguments recently to have this outcome. What school? Hunters Creek Middle School. Tom, any questions? No. Is there anything that you think our viewers would need to know about the way you're feeling, with the family's feeling, Madeline. We are desperate for any answers, anything that you can do to help. I'm here for it. Just please, if if you see my daughter, just please bring her home. I just hope you're okay, Maddie. I hope you're safe. I hope you're not hurt. I just hope she's okay. When um, when did you notice that she was missing? Because this was at the beginning of the, the morning. Um, she got dropped off in the morning. We did not notice until after school pickup at 4, at 4 o'clock when I went to go pick her up and she wasn't at school. So we're going in 24 hours now? Yeah. Just about? Yeah. Nothing? Nothing. No word. No text message. No messages anywhere from her. I've looked at all her social medias, I've looked at all her games she could have played with, any any app, no weird conversations, no, nothing strange, everything was conversations with just normal friends or us. Did she knows how to get home by herself, as if like, let's just say, to, to take a bus or an Uber or something like that? She would know how to get home alone, correct? I'm not sure. I don't know if she would know how to get home. Maybe, I mean, if someone, I'm thinking if someone got in the car with her and, and if she pointed the way, what roads, she probably could figure out how to get, but like, does she know her full address? I don't think, she, I don't think she does. Which would give me the, which, I mean, it just puts in my brain that she always comes home with with someone. She always comes home so with she, me. there's no need for her to really exactly. learn. Okay. And you said no time? He knows everything. I'll try to break this down to you. And hopefully I don't confuse you because you know as you know I as it is on this channel, I talk and I go all over the place and to go back to one thing. So I'll try not to do that. Listen, I'm gonna talk about this interview real quick. <clears throat> when I first saw the interview, when I first made my first video, when I seen her all, you know, jumping and looking up in the air and shaking. <clears throat> It bothered me from a common sense standpoint and an empathetic standpoint of, okay, this woman right here is going through it. Now, mind you, this video, guys, a lot of people don't let you know, this video was less than 24 hours after she was reported missing. Well, after she was last seen. So it's not even a full day yet. A lot of people are talking about, hey, you know, she's not crying. She's not this. She's not that. Everybody deals with stuff differently. Because, you know, I, in some of my stories, I say the same thing. But I'm going to tell you. I'm going to go through these. I got five things I'm going to talk about in this video. 
And I'm going to tell you why I think she acted like that. And while I think that whole vi that whole video right there of her doing that was not of her own doing. Now, let me explain it to you. Watch. First thing is this. I'm not sure when she said, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to share. When she said that first thing she said, when she said that, I was like, OK, and I went back and looked at it, I was like, OK. Maybe she's talking about the police. You know what I think, guys? She was saying. She's not sure what she can share that Stephen uh, Stephen Stearns told her. Remember, I told you in that video I did yesterday, she getting her information from him. She's not out there searching and stuff, which was odd. She's not out there searching and. She's getting information. I don't know what her job was. Some people say she worked at Disney or whatever. I don't know what her job is or her having to go to work or, or whatever. But for some reason, she's not as active as one would think. And that's my question with that. You know, this is your baby, not his. You're getting all your information from him. And I'm sure she is. And I'll prove it to you. I think I, I, think I can prove it. I don't know what I can tell you. She's not talking about the police. She's talking about this guy. She's talking about this guy because he's sitting next to her and he's looking at her. He's, he's like this. Before I go into that, let me say this before I say this whole thing. I think this woman is psychologically broken. You know, I talk about the thing where I say, you know, a psychologically broken man or broken male syndrome. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? BMS, same thing for women. And you're seeing what a broken female does under stress. This woman is psychologically broken. She is. And I also think that she's a victim. The only thing she's a victim of is predatory manipulation by uh, Stephen Stearns. Because I'm going to tell you something. And before I get back in this, let me just drop this on y'all real quick. I learned this today. Three things. A sexual predator does. There are three traits, three main traits. The first one is crafting an emo emotional dependency, right? She looked for him to love. She looked for validation from him and want his love and affection. She do. See, he don't have to be sexual with you, but the predatory manipulation is always there. I bet she valid wanted validation from him all the time. She felt bad because she wasn't spending the time with her child like she was supposed to because she's working nights. That takes a toll on parents. It does. You're not there when your children sleeping. You, this guy filled a void for her. So in her th being thankful and all stuff, it's a lot of stuff he got away with. I believe that. Second thing is this. They speak in manip manip ah, manipulative language, whether it's verbal or nonverbal. A guy that you have a certain fear of or fear of losing or something like that. When you care about somebody and you don't want to offend them, what do you do? You're talking, you're constantly looking for validation. You see that a lot with married couples. When the woman speaking on something that's serious, she'll be sitting there and the man will be sitting there and she'll talk and she'll keep looking when it's something like as if to say, Hey, am, am I'm doing, am I doing okay? I think this is the same shit. It's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. She didn't know what she could say because he's the one telling her what to say. She look at that body language with him. If she if she's going through the, that's why I think she was doing all this shaking and stuff and looking up and stuff because she was trying to recall all the stuff he was telling her what to say and what not to say. And the jumping and stuff was the nervousness because she was waiting for this thing to get over with. Because she don't know what's going to happen when these people leave after he. You know, if she said something wrong or not. Another thing is this. They display uh, displaying jealous or controlling behavior. I just told you about the controlling behavior. Two and one nonverbal. They might just come in there when you're supposed to be having a private time talking to somebody and just make their presence known to intimidate you. This guy right here is classic textbook manipulator. He is. And he's trash. Now, let's get back to this thing. I wanted to get that out the way. I had to write that down. Shit, I'm getting mad.
She said she wasn't active. Like I said, she wasn't active, but she stated that her family was. Yeah, my family was looking for, they did this, they did that. The police are going to do searches. And then the part that tripped me out, she said, well, when they do that, you know, they'll, they'll, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to be letting out. Like, let, you organize that. You're the parent. That lets me know he's the one telling her this stuff. He don't want her to go searching for nothing. Because what about if she said, hey, it's a certain spot because he, he picked that spot for some reason. Maybe he took her there one time. What if by happenstance, let's check over at the spot where such such, or say the police separate them and the right detective is next to her searching or talking and say, hey, is it a place that you and Mr. Stearns used to go or a place he hangs out that nobody really knows about that's off the beaten path? And she mentions that where the body was found. This guy's not stupid. He not dumb. He kept her out of the search loop. Oh, 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 take your time. You're, you're, you're fragile. Don't, 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 don't. This is probably something new for her. The affection he's showing, the concern. She didn't know he had it in her. So she likes what she's getting from him. So she'll just, I trust him. She kept saying we. Everybody keeps talking about this we. Anytime you're in a relationship, whether you're married or not, and you have a man in the house, normally the woman's going to stick by what the man say. So when she says we, she's validating what she was told by this guy and you saw it on TV. It's not that hard to, to, to figure out. She don't know nothing, but she's saying we because he's speaking and he's the eyes and ears for both of them. He is. Another thing is this, the third thing. She could not. She could not tell you any details that law, law enforcement uh, allowed her to reveal because they, they didn't tell her. They were talking to him. Remember, she worked. She come home if she's upset. And remember, this is only 24 hours. She came home, probably was sleeping. And he's putting himself in the front of her. Hey, talk to me. I'm the man. And most likely they would. He's the head of the household. He's the man. They're going to talk to him. This thing is, you can see it. You can see it. I don't know the details that law enforcement are allowing me to say. Why don't you if they talk to you? They'll say, hey, you know, the media is going to come and talk to you. You're going to say this, but you can't say this. That everything she said was, what is he going to do with the investigation? You don't know anything. So whatever you say out your mouth ain't really dealing with that situation. What parent would sit there and have the police tell them what they can and can't say? And can't remember it. Come on. Come on. Your baby's missing. Your baby is missing. This part blew my shit. Like blew my mind. Check this out. She don't know her address at 13 years old. How many of y'all out there when y'all was in school, we used to have these little cards, emergency cards next person uh, 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 the alert when you're sick and their address and it usually was our mom and dad correct or the place we lived we had to fill out stuff every year what's your address this year in the school year where, where, where are we sending re these report cards we, come on they don't come to the parents for that they go to the kids everybody fills their thing out 13 years old she don't know her address at her house even if y'all moved there hell what is February, she don't know where she lived yet. Uh, she, uh, if she got in the car, she knows the roads, but she doesn't know the actual address. Hmm, come on, with the, come on, come on. Something don't sound right with that. And I was like, okay, maybe this one, see, listen, sometimes maybe this woman he was like the, 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 the guy that did most of the stuff in the house while she slept because her, her hours was off. Think about it. And she spent a certain amount of hours, a minimal amount of hours a day because of her work shift and stuff she has to do by making him happy less with uh, Madeline. And what happens, more uh, predatory behavior, right? This guy is around the kid more than her. Maybe a bond developed. Not, 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 not. 
sexual, but like, you know, a bond where, you know, because he was with him for years. He was like a friend or like, you know, she respected him as the man in the house or the guardian or like a, almost a, a stepfather almost. Jennifer saw that, felt comfortable with it, leaned back off of it, leaned back off of the situation and was like, OK, this is my role in the house because everybody has a role in the household. And he took over. She seen the daughter was happy. A daughter, daughter was happy. Never bothered her. And once you get into that type of mode, it's hard to come back out of that. Another thing is this. You don't know what you, 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 that, that, that 13 year old thing that blew me. I'm like, yo, it's no way. No way. Another thing is this. I think that the message she had for Maddie at the end. Uh, Maddie. Oh, uh, come home. Uh, we miss you. Uh, uh, okay. Then you turn around and you say you think she's been kidnapped. Why would you say that on TV? Why would you say that on TV? And then turn around and say, Maddie, come home. How you going to come home? She's kidnapped. It's like, I, and now don't get me wrong. People do not know how to act on camera. As a content creator, I had to learn camera presence. So I can't hold certain things against her. And you got to remember, I'm looking at it like, okay, well, maybe she wasn't crying because she was in shock, utter shock. Everybody grieves differently and they, they handle stress differently. But I honestly think this whole thing was scripted under the guise of him. That's why he sat so close to her. Because if you listen, when she's talking, go back to the interview, you'll hear him clear his voice, clear his throat a couple of times. <clears throat> go look. Go back and look. This guy ran at house through the manipulation of her. He prayed on her to get her. He seen she was already psychologically broken and then it, it poured in. And then once he seen he had full control of her, it went into the child. It went on the child. This guy is a womanizer. He is. And it's a lot of people out there that's like that. Psychologically broken people are looking for somebody to put them back together or supply something that they don't have or they don't want to tackle. And they put it on the other person. And the other person comes in and say, OK, I'll be your rescue. This woman's psychologically broken. He knows it. I'm going to tell you, and it, it, this is the same thing that goes with uh, certain situations when you have, uh, I'll give you a perfect example, where you have certain situations where you have uh, people, like, remember, I, I would say to you guys, you know, a psychologically broken person will have, have it to where, you know, they feel as though they attach to a certain person and they have a fear of loss and rejection. Same thing with a woman. A lot of times that people say they have daddy issues, right? This guy's coming in and he's providing some type of leadership she might not have even had when she was younger, or she might have had parents or a parent that was like psychologically damaging her, whether it was verbal abuse, physical abuse or whatever. And they attract this type of man or have it to where they give up a certain energy where this guy can come in. And I think that's her problem. I think that's her problem. She's psychologically broken and she give off a certain type of energy that bring a certain type of person to her. We all give off a certain type of energy. It's up to us whether we accept what's brought in front of us out of loneliness or, or, or just wanting to be, you know, wanting somebody or not. And that's one of the big problems we have out here right now. A lot of people don't want to sift through the garbage of it in their own minds and in their own lives. They want somebody else to do it. This whole thing is a mess. Now, let me get to this last part. I'm dragging this thing. To further prove what I was just saying about the brokenness and this guy, Stephen Stearns, being a uh, predatory manipulator. Look at this. I just seen this this morning. I, I can't believe I never seen this. Look at this. And this will tell you everything you need to know. Once I seen this video, this little short clip, it blew the whole case wide open for me. Look, she's in the interview with the media and he goes and sits behind her, making his presence known, letting her know. He said, did you see her eyes look to the side? She knows he's there. She's looking at the meeting. She can see him back there. Look what he's doing. 
That Those are intimidation tactics. A lot of abusers do that type of stuff. What kind of person does this if they're looking for help from the public? He's totally out of line. Ladies and gentlemen, when I seen that, I was done. This guy right here is anything you say he is. Totally out of line. You know she on a Zoom meeting is an important thing with finding a daughter and you go and bomb that? Video bomb it? Just show up? First of all, you, you're a grown-ass man with your hat on backwards. You sitting up there looking at your hand. Why you got to be in the photo? You know why? Because you want to hear what she say and make sure them questions being asked. She don't sneak and say something because she knows something. Now I believe she knows something. Whether it was something going on when, it, when uh, Madeline was younger or it was just something's off. She knows something. And I wouldn't be surprised if she's brought up on some type of charge. Though not as severe as his, some type of charge. Because I gave her the benefit of the, ah, of the doubt. But I honestly believe that at one time or another, this girl, Madeline, your daughter, came to you. And you said something and probably said something to you and you probably dismissed it. And he was watching to make sure nothing happened. And it emboldened him because I'm telling you something. A lot of times in these households, these guys that do something, because I'm telling you, these predatory people like this, they push on you. And they'll push on you to see if you ever push back. If you don't, they put more pressure and it might be more antics and it might get bolder and bolder and more emboldened. To where they get to close enough to where they're going to achieve that goal. And when they achieve it, hopefully nothing happens. And then it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. I think he came to her. The, uh, Madeline came to her, said something, right? She was like, okay, I'll talk to him. Or just dismissed it and never said nothing to him off of fear of losing him. Because that's a strong accusation to, hear me? Accuse the man you love and care about or might be dependent on whether it's psychologically or physically or, or financially of a heinous crime like that. What if I tell him that? What if he ups and leaves? Where would I be now? You don't know. People build households around their finances sometime. What if he up and leave and she's stuck with all the bills and can't afford that place she's living at because she needs his income? That's another thing. A lot of times people be financially messed up to where, you know, the man you living with, right? You might need his finest way. Like you can't kick him out right now. I don't know what it is, but there's something with her. If you look at her pictures, she look like she in pain or she, she taking the shit every time. She like, she's confused. That ain't the first time she looked like that y'all. And he's seen it. He probably keep her with that look on her face. She's one of these people, in my opinion, that they go to ask questions before you answer. You know what? I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. That's a bad trait to have. And a lot of y'all women that deal with men got to get out of that. If we're going to call for accountability out here right now. When somebody asks you a question, answer it. For real. When you're in the household with somebody and somebody close to you, I got to know that. You on board and we going in the same direction with the same motivation. Man, just seeing him do that makes me mad. Then he going to turn bitch in court and be scared to talk and tell his charges around men. But in this house, he was a bull in a china shop. That's just my opinion of this whole thing, man. I don't want to drag this on, but I just think she was a victim. The only thing she's a victim of is just being up under this guy's thumb. I don't know if she's codependent or what. But I don't think this whole thing was scripted and the information she got and how she looked dumb in that interview was stuff he either told her she could not couldn't do and the information came from her, him, not her. I doubt if she spoke to the authorities like she did without him being there. I guarantee she probably never even had a, uh, what's his name, a, a singular interview until after they locked him up and she was, uh, what's her name? I don't think she had anything to do with this situation because he's not talking. People are saying, hey, there's videos in the thing. We ain't seen the video. I'm not going to go with that. But I mean, I, I'm not going to put it past and discredit anybody that's telling me anything, but I'm not going to put it on here as if I know it. I, I'm not going to do that. A child is dead here. And 
For all we know, what if we all are wrong? She didn't know anything. And, and I'm not going to slam. But for some reason. This don't look right. It don't. Leave me a comment, man. Tell me what y'all think about this, man. I mean, I, I'm not going to say nothing else until new details come out. If y'all send me something saying he say, she say, do me a favor. Send it to my email. It's in the link in the description box. I'm spitting like a poisonous snake. And uh, do me a favor. And if it's from a media, let me see it. And then I'll report on it. I, I, I can't do that. If I can't just say somebody said because somebody says they said something. I don't know who they is. I'm sorry, guys. I got to be honest, man. I mean, it's, a child's life has been lost for nothing. Mother failed her. And this douchebag did what he wanted to do. He went out with a bang. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Justice for Madeline Soto. I'm out.